What's poppin' is your boy Mike Powers from my real hip hop heads only. We do lyrical hip hop over here. We celebrate those who do things with words that most of us could not. Mm. A breach has therefore been formed between those who possess ears to appreciate this brand of art and those who seem to have no need for such profound gifts. This chasm is usually manifested and bifurcated by age. Our job as OGs, ambassadors, and standard bearers of this sort of art is to somehow breathe enough life into this current resurgence that it might continue to thrive long after we, those who built it, are long gone and forgotten. To that end, the gentleman on the left side of your screen represents the bridge between those who constructed this and those whose charge it is to evolve it. The blood and energy of the young has once again been infused into this movement. This young man combines a sharp ass pen game with the aura of a scholar. Coming off the critically acclaimed album, Black Sun Tzu, and representing the mighty Umbrella Collective, hailing from none other than Brooklyn, New York. Ladies and gentlemen, for the first time on the Mike Power Show, Ja King the Divine is in the building. Peace, God. How are you? I'm very chilling, good. Chilling, chilling. It How is my good? honor to have you in this chair right now. You're making a lot of noise mm -hmm. out here. Umbrella yeah. all over the place. Shout to Coach. Shout um, to Pro. Shout real, to Mickey. Shout to the whole squad. Real quick, I want to show love to Umbrella because I fuck with all of them heavy. You know what I mean? Mickey, Pro, and all of them. I got my my separate branch, though. I got my own shit called, like, Divine. Like, that's my own, uh, like, little label of guys or whatever. It's, like, two, you know, other guys. But Umbrella, you know, a lot of people link me to them. And, you know, I, I show love regardless. We all in the same, you feel me, boat. So. That's what's up. Educators. Yeah. I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. You you jumped ahead of me. And we, that's, like, my third question right now. Mm -hmm. But now let's get to the first one. Um, okay. You're a young man. I believe 23. Yeah. Yep, yep. 23 right now. 23 Same years way. old. Uh, how did you get on this lyrical shit when most of your generation seems not to have a taste for it? Um, you know what I'm saying? It's it, you gotta think my my pops, you know, a lot of a lot of the other men that grew me up, you know, where I grew up at in Brooklyn and shit, you know, everybody that I listened to music around at that time, they all listened to different eras of hip hop. So if my pops was bumping Help the Skelter, Poor Righteous Teacher, um, you know what I'm saying? Um uh, and those type of cats, I'll go to my grandfather crib and we knocking Tim Dog, Spoonie G, Eric B and Rock Kim. You know what I'm saying? And I'll go to my aunt's house and now I'm listening to whole Beanie Siegel, you know, that whole 2000 shit. So I was able to, you know, get it all just, you know, throughout family and shit. Shout out to your back. family for raising you right. Yeah. You know, and that's why that's what we gotta do. That that's important. I appreciate that. Um what yeah. was the first rap song that, that got you hooked? Um, The first, well, I, I loved a lot of it, but I could tell you the first song that I knew had a big impression on me, and I always bring this song up, is Nas is like, you know what I mean? When I heard them first four to eight bars, I didn't know what he was saying. You know, I always say that, but I fucking loved it. You know what I'm saying? Freedom of Jail, Clips Inserted, The Baby's Being Born, Same Time a Man is Murdered, The Beginning and End. As far as rap go, it's only natural. I explain my plateau and also what defines my name. Like, I heard that shit and I was like, wow. You know what I mean? Wow. Yes, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. And that's the effect that Nas has on the intelligent mind. If, you, if your mind's not working properly, you're going right. to miss it. Some people going to say gonna Nas it. is boring. I call those people stupid. Yeah. Yeah, 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 it's 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 different levels, son. Yeah, levels. I appreciate I appreciate the fuck out of that. And Divine Records, talk to me about yeah. Divine Records. So it's it's a little creative collective of dudes. I started um back in like 2018. You know, I moved to Long Island with my pops, and uh, I met this boy named like Javi Javi Darko in uh, college. You know, he was somebody else that I heard rap and was really good. And we met on some real, like, wild style, old school hip hop movie shit. Like, some people were saying he was nice. Some people were saying I was nice. We met up in the hallway, big group of niggas. And we just went back and forth. You know what I mean? Just spitting rhymes and it started there. That's shit. a classic hip hop story. So many yeah. people that, that link up in this, especially from back in the day. That's right. how it was. They would get together. 
somebody would say that guy is nice. Somebody would tell him, yo, exactly. that guy is nice. And a lot of times that would turn into a battle. Y'all didn't battle, battle, did y'all? We battled. We went oh. back and forth, back and forth. And I ain't going to hold you. That was the first time I got my ass kicked. Javi smoked me, you know what I'm saying? Like, niggas was going crazy when I said what I said, but when he started hitting them punchlines, see, at the time, I wasn't nice with the punches yet. He was nice with punchlines, so it was easy to, you know, take in. And he was hitting me with them shits, and I got, yeah, it was crazy. It was steel sharp and steel type thing, right? Type shit, yeah. And, and to this day, we've been learning and, and studying and just, just trying to, you know, make each other better. But that's my brother right there, yep. Um... In the video for um, the blood, the sweat, and the steel, mm -hmm. you have a part where you're talking at the beginning about the Eightfold Path, which stems from Buddhism. This is, you know, like the Eightfold Path, mm -hmm. where, you know, self-mastery is necessary in order to manifest things in real time and change the outcome of your own life and manifest your own destiny. You study Buddhism? Yeah, I'm into, I'm into Buddhism, yeah. And the whole Siddhartha like Katar was how you pronounce Siddhartha. I can't say the last name, but I studied that too back in the day. Right, um, right. Mm -hmm. So that was that was the guy that went on the eightfold path. I believe his name was Siddhartha. Siddhartha, yeah, yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and um, so how did you get into Buddhism? Um, shit, son. I, I'm really I'm one of them kids. I've always been curious. So, like, if I'm hearing something, like, I could have been watching a fucking cartoon one day and they said something about Buddhism. And then from there, I just went and did my research. As long, from as long as I can remember, though, I've always been into it. You know, Buddhism, Taoism, um, you know, Mus Muslim shit. I've been into Christianity stuff, different uh, branches of Christianity and stuff like that. So I just, I'm always interested in, like, learning shit, you know, whether it's history or it's music shit, it's whatever. Mm-hmm. Why did you think it important to bring that into hip hop? I feel like uh, sometimes hip hop could get stale. And I feel like sometimes it gets stale because people ain't pulling from different references. I think everybody sometimes is pulling from the same shit. So like it's hard to get a new something new out of that. So I just felt like, yo, I'm going to take the shit I learned and I'm going to make like, if you really listen to my rhymes, you'll hear a lot of different shit, a lot of historical places, a lot of events, a lot of certain terms and terminologies and philosophy. I just make it sound, like, cool. I make it sound like just, uh, like, another rhyme. But I just thought it, it it added depth to what I'm saying. And it shows, like, I'm not just rhyming about another day. I'm rhyming about how whatever I went through that day really made me feel on an eternal level, you know what I'm saying? I mean, you spit so hard on that. I, I won't try to to quote your lyrics now, um, mm -hmm. but the bars is crazy. Back then, when he matched black with the Matt Rims, Mac 10, still feel bad for assassin. Good angel to a dark cut assassin. From a chalkboard to a boy in a Max pen. Um, what mind frame were you in when you write something like that? The blood, sweat, and the steel? Yeah, the blood, sweat, and um, the steel. Yeah, bro, you know what it is? A lot of times it's the beats. And, you know, I know sometimes, you know, I go real left with certain production. And 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 I need it sometimes because it brings out a certain uh, level in my pen. Yeah. You know, like sometimes I love the boom bap shit. I love the classic hard hitting shit. But it's um it's a certain pocket I can't get into. I can still get my shit off and be smooth and be witty and, and do that. I love it. But, you know, when I got a certain atmosphere and I make them loops and them chops a certain way, it, it brings out a certain level of creativity that I feel like only myself could really do that way. You know what I mean? And make it digestible still. Yeah, and you seem you seem to have sort of a serious uh, persona. Mm -hmm. Um, what are you trying to really accomplish in this rap game? What's your goal? Um, you know what I mean? I really look at myself as a writer more than, you know, just a straight up entertainer or rap nigga. So I'll, every song, every rhyme, every album is really almost like my own personal almanac or what I'm going through or, or how I'm looking at life. So I want my shit to just be be like museum music, like shit that you just sit there and you really sit with. And um, it makes you think for a long time and, and not always think like some shit you just enjoy, you just play. But. I want to really change how people listen to rap and listen to writing and rap and uh, make people really appreciate it again. Not saying that they don't like we have people that really break down rhymes, you know, what I mean, and, yeah. and get deep. But I want to be that 
that uh that branch of the J Electronicas and the Jizzes and the um you know super eclectic cats who really put a lot of thought into what they're doing, not just the rhyme, but the soundscape, the skit, the transition, you know what I mean? The artwork, the song title, all of that, everything I put into the album has something to do with what I'm saying. It's never just random shit. You know, you it's all were, like a puzzle. You're a real student of the yeah. music. Mm -hmm. And have you had you always been like that since since you discovered Nas? You always been a student like that? Yeah, yeah, because you know, when you get older, some stuff may not be as as deep as you probably made it when you were younger, you know what I'm saying? But yeah, the, a lot of this stuff, the rock hymns, you know what I mean, nods, black thoughts, like hearing them rhymes when you a certain age really make you think like these niggas are aliens. Like there's no way anybody could write that. So yeah, I've been studying them my whole life. And I mean, going along with the idea that you a little bit different from the mm -hmm. pack, um, you don't, I don't see you wearing a lot of labels and brand mm -hmm. names and stuff like that. You don't really conform to the current fashion trend. Why is that? Nah, a lot of this shit is trash. And if people knew like real quality and, you know, in garments and clothes, they wouldn't wear a lot of the shit they wear because they don't know like, that that uh that leather you wearing ain't even the best leather, you know what I'm saying? I'm also into clothes and and stuff like that too. So I'm always about quality, not only in my music, but if I'm wearing some shit, I just want to always, you know, wear what I like and what I think is fly. So I don't know. I'm just trying to just just change the the preface of everything in every way, boy. But not I'm not trying to do it. This is just who I am for real, you know. Were and yeah, um, the album Black Sun Zoo has a. Uh, MF Doom inspired artwork, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Um, what what did Doom mean to you? Um, so Doom, like, for me, it, it wasn't always just about his rhymes and what he was saying, even though I feel like he was brilliant. It, it's going to take a certain type of ear to hear that, though. Mm -hmm. Um, But it was more about the boldness of what he was doing. You know, the, he just not giving a fuck. Like, you can literally hear he makes certain records, certain beats, he don't care. Like he was doing whatever internally felt right and it felt creative to him. And that shit is inspiring because it took him a long way. And I remember growing up, like I was playing Doom and playing certain shit. I was the weirdo. Niggas be like, yo, bro, what is that? You know what I'm saying? Now you can't go nowhere without seeing MF Doom face on a t shirt, a ring, or this or that. Like he's inspiring other people on an artistic level and not just a rap level. Just, you know. It's sort of the definition of what an artist is, right? You like right. no preconceived notion, just no. what happens in here and what happens in here and whatever your medium is, you let it, if you paint, it come on the right. canvas. If you spit, it's coming across in the booth. Right. And, and that's what I'm saying. And then the whole, the whole thing with the mask was like, yo, like you don't, you don't need to see my face. Cause it's not about nothing up here. It's not about nothing on my chest, nothing on my wrist. It's just about the art. And I feel like we got a, a lot of rap music, especially black music, has became more about other shit than the actual art form itself. You know what I'm saying? Everybody don't got a rhyme like Nas. That's not what I'm saying either. But it's a certain it's a certain respect level for the culture and just music composition that people have lost. Our people especially, you feel me? They They don't really appreciate music, you know? Listen so. up, everybody. The young man is only 23. This is what we like to hear right there. Mm -hmm. Um, when I hear a song, when I hear a song, uh Shaw, Sean and Marlon's gems. Yeah. I I'm an older cat. Mm -hmm. I hear my youth in that song. Uh just the way you approach it and, and on that beat. My shit is universal. It costs to hit these rhymes with that purse too. The old trash but this don't take it personal. Just take no. I'm a Capricorn. I was born go two horns. This Megalodon no to get this one more. Like can you talk about who may have influenced you? Um around that time, yo, around that time it was a lot of rockness, a lot of Sean P, a lot of uh was the just this around that time because my flow was real like you could hear it was kind of um melodic you know what i'm saying it wasn't so much more i was super nice with the pin yet but i i used my vocal tone to get my my shit across so around that time that's really what i was listening to you know what i'm saying when you look over the hip-hop landscape as it currently exists what excites you 
Um, what excites me now, I think, is the resurgence of this shit, this sound that we're doing right now. I see a lot of people my age who probably was doing something before a certain sound now, but it changed because they see I'm successful doing what I'm doing. I like that. Um, yeah, I just like how you can now really be yourself with this shit and you're going to find an audience somehow. Like, it's literally an audience for everybody. And, and I love that, you know. So I assume you have friends who are young like you. Yeah. Um, what are they listening to? Um, see, I got different friend groups, and you know, some some of my friends, you know, they listen to drill rap and shit. They listen to NBA Young Boy. You know what I mean? That's that's what they do. That's their lifestyle and shit. So that's what they do. But then, like my immediate, you know, the guys who I make music with on my label, they real culture dudes too. You know what I'm saying? And, and that's the thing I really want to push out there that it's a it's a um a lane and it's a group of very young cultured people who really love this shit probably the same way y'all did when y'all first heard some of these niggas, you know, pop out and do their first records or whatever. But it ain't it ain't pushed. You know what I mean? They're gonna tell you that nobody cares. And it's like that's not the case. It's a lot of young cats that care. And some of them. They, con they, you know, they like what they like. Like, they like Mac Miller and Joey Badass, so they may not go back to the roots how they should. But it is it is some of us that really dig into the roots and, and love the culture and the essence of it. So, The song Attack by Stratagem yeah. is incredible. Throwing dice with this life shit. Beaning for a nice wrist. Might flip. Bargain my soul for the right prices. They might be. Niggas be using me like a stipend. My right wrist move with killer jewels and hype shit. I'm the wonderful asshole your mother do And the coochie fucking hat slacks like a huxtable fuckable The cat that make you dance like a buckaloo The mask black just so I could cover the other truth What else? Like shits when dealing under the night's mist This a bummer summer, my younger hunger to rise quick Why it is? Watch your son die, living God sent Mine's bent on my final wild way in his house spent. I think I heard J Electronica spit on that beat Yeah Yeah Talk to me about, talk to me about J Electronica, how you feel about him? Um, now I know some guys like they don't like them because of the catalog is it's not as extensive as it should be for a guy to be up there with some of these greats. But um, to me, like the way he write and the way he create and, and did certain things in 2006, 2007, 2008 was so far ahead. And it was so potent that I feel like he deserved to be up there. So he had a big impact on me, especially when it came to poetry and just using your words a certain way making sure you're very um, decisive about your diction, you know what I mean, and what you're saying so you can really paint that image the right way. So, yeah, he, he means a lot to me. I know some of his antics outside of hip-hop looks crazy and don't make sense, but when it comes to just the music, he's incredible. And it's, it's few people that really write like that, if any, for real. You know what I'm saying? So when you talk about, like, 0708, is that around, is that around the time that he dropped? Yep. Um, what's the... Um, who the fuck is the J Electronica? Who that the fuck, it? yep. Yeah. ABC, he was already dropping Shiny Soup Theory. He was already dropping, um, that's the, remember the Star Wars tape? He had that. You know what I'm saying? He was already dropping that. So, yeah, it was around that time. But people, it, when you hear this shit, it sounds like he only did it five years ago. But it's like, nah, that shit was in 2008, bro. And I know, and, and you're right, he does catch a lot of flack online, but I got to say this. You may mm -hmm. agree. I don't know if you agree or not, but mm -hmm. he's one of those guys that, okay, you got your top 10. Everybody can debate that, but just you take Jay and he's over here by himself. Right. In yeah. my opinion, like, because he going to go some places. Mm -hmm. You're not going to expect him to go. You're going to learn so much by listening to him. But mm -hmm. the fact that he could do it in a flow, that he could educate right. you through a flow. Right. And, and, it, and, and not everything is as preachy as they make him out to be. It's you know not what I'm saying it's not as preachy as they make him out to be. But exactly. Have we figured out what's going on with him for real right now with the not dropping and just, you know, what I mean, years and years of not dropping something. That nigga crazy. I don't even <laughs> like, I don't even know, boy. he in his own world. You know what I mean? I, I some shit he posts get me tight. So I don't know what that dude is on, but I, I love what he does. Right, I love Word. what he does. And it's tough. If you're a J Electronica fan, it's tough when you out here trying to defend him. Because whenever yeah. you bring up his name, somebody got to say, going to say something about it. And I got to say, 
when people say something, I would say, just like I say about Ransom and a couple of other right. people, who right. can you name that's better? It's certain people in the game you can't be better than. You can only be as good as. There's nobody that's better than Jay Electronica. Right. Right. He's in his own lane. And that's another thing. It's hard to carve your... People got to give props to the people who carve their own lane in this shit. Rap is so, like, for the most part, right side of the one brain that, nigga, if you able to do that, that means you some sort of special to me. You know what I'm saying? Because if you ain't doing this shit a certain way, you don't get ears. Your whole squad does well with with, with the vinyls. And I'm talking about the extended squad of uh, Umbrella. I got to get mm-hmm. deeper into Divine. What's your strategy when it comes to the vinyl? How do you think about that in terms of like the artwork and being able to put that in your hands? And what has the reception been? Um, from your fan base when you drop those vinyls? Um, I mean, the reception is always great. I think like every time I drop a new one, I get a new influx and like new people who love me, not only for the rap, but straight up just for artwork. You know what I mean? Um, and for me, you know, I go into every album with some type of theme. You know what I mean? So when I was in the delusions of Granger era, it was a, it was a samurai theme. You know what I mean? It was it was a black theme. Then I went into Sun Tzu with like, okay, this is, I went from the, the, the hero samurai to the, the villain general, you know what I mean? I went into that era and uh, that had a thing and I kind of just, I was listening to a lot of Doom around that time, so I thought I paid homage. And I was really into like 70s, 60s cartoons and shit like that. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, Thundercat, uh, Johnny Quest, um, uh, fuck. What's that nigga name? Hong Kong Fooey. Hong Kong Fooey. Number one super guy. Hong Kong Fooey. Quicker than the human eye. I, Ooh, I really Hong Kong Fooey. Yo, Magilla Gorilla. Like, I watched a lot of that shit for real growing up. My damn self. So, that's why I was like, yo, I'll probably... If anybody can make a homage album like that to Doom, it would be me. So... Man, careful yeah, watching um, all the old cartoons and taking in all this. You gonna mess, mess around and, and age to forty yeah. right before our <laughs> eyes, man. Like, you sound like an old yeah. head right now. Yeah, that, that's what I'm saying, man. This shit was just in me for a long time. Like the shit I was interested in was that, and the, I love those cartoons. It's not so much just the animation because I love them for that, but you remember the jazz and the shit they would put in those shows though, and the music. While they was chasing or doing uh journeys and shit, yeah. that, I loved all of that shit for real. You yeah, know? the soundtrack of it, of course. Yeah, outside of mm. your crew right now, who impresses mm. you on the mic? Uh, like you said, it'd be guys like Mickey Pro. Um, I like Maze a lot. Jr. You know what I'm saying? If we talking about you know another tier of the underground, I like Rock Marcy a lot. Makami. Mm. I love Benny. Yeah. Khan. Action Bronson has been a, you know, I've been, I liked him a long time, even though Ghostface chewed his ass up. Yes. Um, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I fuck with Action, though. Um, yeah, those, those are guys I like. Black Thought, of course, I already named. Yeah. Um, what do Kooji you think about, rap. what do you think about Kooji rap just, Coming back like ugh. Yeah, Kooji rap, son. That's one of my favorite rappers ever, boy. And nobody know not nobody, but a lot of people will never understand his impact. And it's unfortunate. But seeing what seeing him still do it just proves like, yo, he's a machine, boy. He's different. He was never on the same level as these guys. You know what I'm saying? And I love it. Boy. High level. And you saw he made that album with, with 38 special. You know what that I mean? That was crazy. Man, look, and you know, and special is nasty, you know what I mean? That's another one I love. He wanted yeah. to when it come to coke rap, he gotta be at least top three, top, you know what I'm saying? That nigga is crazy. And it's the punchlines is crazy. Punchlines between him, Jada, Benny Khan, you know, a couple older cats. Them niggas is just wild, yeah. boy. Etho is out here doing his thing. Etho. Man, and that's an artist. You never know yeah. what bag he about to come out of. He really a deep ass artist. Yeah, I like streets too. Rome streets is incredible. Oh my god, Rome yeah, streets nigga, is an alien. That nigga is different, boy. I love that nigga too. He's a complete alien. I'm liking. I'm liking how Stove God is coming up right now too. Stove yeah. different. Yeah, yeah. I like Stove. That reasonable drought was amazing to me. I thought that shit was unique and it was raw. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, 
Daniel yeah. Son, those guys. Daniel Son. Yeah, Falcon yeah. Outlaw. I was, before you came on here, I was just listening to Falcon Outlaw. They crazy. Okay. Don't let me get to talk about everybody else. This is John <laughs> King, the Divine's <laughs> interview right here. What's been one mistake you made in this game that you would advise other MCs to avoid? Um, I would say, honestly, taking... Not not doing enough knowledge on how to invest in yourself in this game. You know, mm -hmm. I always was studying and, and trying to figure it out. But you know what I mean, if I could have found out some some things earlier, it would it would be that. I mean, other than that, I feel like I don't really regret or take back anything, son. Everything is made, you know, made me up until this point. And I still got ways to go. So let me get this correct. Mm -hmm. Is it true? You opened up for the guy Rock him. Yeah, I did. Yeah. That shit was crazy. Listen, when you found out you was gonna open for Rock him, crazy. What went through your mind? You can't even explain that type of shit. You know what I mean? When you love this shit a certain way, like opening up for Rock Kim felt like uh, some shit. Like I would I would say to my men on some like, yeah, bro, one day we gonna do that, but no, we ain't gonna really do that. You know what I'm saying? So when it happened and I got the opportunity and I locked it down for not only me, myself, but also the two other guys in Divine, Javi Darko and KJ, that shit was crazy for them too. Like everybody was took in the back. And then when we got there and we seen the crowd at 3,000 and we on this big ass stage with real monitors and real mics, it was like, what the fuck? You know what I'm saying? It was like a culture shock for real. But it was amazing. And, uh, when we got off stage, we was we was embraced like for real, for real. From the God, uh, from the no, the, not the God, but the fans. Like yeah, what happened was he got stuck in some fucking traffic or something, so he didn't even see it. And that and the crazy part is, out of all the openers, we probably had the most reception of a crowd of twenty five thousand. We had niggas lit screaming back, Javi having niggas lit turning up. It was crazy. You know what I'm saying? I even had. Fans from Florida, and I ain't even noticed. My own personal fans pop out to the show. Had them, you know, I signed the autograph. They shit. They was, they showed mad love. I took pictures with them. So it was just a great time, boy. And it was a, you know, a reminder like, yo, you doing something right, you know? How did you get booked on the on the on the show with Rock Him? Um, this this promoter named Dan reached out. I forgot the name of his promoting agency. Um, it's been a minute since we spoke. But um, yeah, he reached out. He's like, "Yo, I, I like what you do. You real dope. Ah, ah, I want you to, you know, you could come perform with, with one of these guys." I'm like, "Who?" He told me the name, and I'm like, "Yeah, why not?" And then not only that, um, he said you could also bring whoever you want. You know what I'm saying? I see you got your own little movement going on. Like, come down and fuck with us. So that's how that happened. Did you meet Rock him? I mean, no, see, I couldn't even meet him, son, because his security was acting crazy. The whole night was foul. Like, he was supposed to be there to see us perform, and then he was supposed to meet him after. But, you know, the COVID shit was, was kind of just leaving, so they wasn't jacking it. They said we would have had to follow him to some after party shit. I'm like, nah, boy, like, he got it. Listen, you know what I mean? Somebody yeah. watching this video right now, go tag the 18th letter. And let him know Jock King the Divine <laughs> was at the show and tore it down. And respectfully, yeah, this is one of Rock Kim's babies right here. You know what I mean? No, like, up. like straight he up. was raised on it. You know what I mean? And he carried straight on up. the legacy. So we hope that um somehow that you and Rock Kim can kind of make that connection because he really need to hear you and get hip to the movement. Um, I read that you were a D two athlete in college. Yes. What sport? Yes. So I, I played ball. You know what I mean? Um, I graduated from Brooklyn Collegiate High School in Brownsville. I had a couple of scholarships and shit. Um, you know what I mean? And uh, I went to college for a few months, but yo, I I lost passion for the game. I got real uninspired, um, and I kind of just put it down. You know what I'm saying? I was supposed to play one year there and then go to either Bucknell University or Boston University, and those are D ones, and I was going to play there. Listen, what you think about um, Anthony Street Clothes Davis and all the injuries? <laughs> yeah, you know, I feel like, and I don't know, boy. Like, I don't even, I feel like he has some good games and some bad shits. He is what he is, boy. I don't know. Yeah. What do you remember about the first music you ever purchased? Uh, 
what was it? Get rich or die trying? Yeah. Oh, word. <laughs> that ass. I I got that CD. Um. Yeah, you know, I I love Fifty Cent. So honestly, I remember I had his, some of his music on my iPod Nano and shit growing up. That's really all I can remember. I love loved his album. Played the video game Fifty Cent Bulletproof. I was a real fan. Oh, I remember that video game. Yeah. Yeah, I used but, to walk around the crib, tank top and all that. Explain his outfit to me. It looks fresh <laughs> as hell, but just explain the process. Oh, shit, boy. Like, yo, around that time, I was I was working security in Manhattan, like at the theaters and shit, Lion King and all of that. Right? Yeah. And then, I don't know, I really fell in love with just looking like that for a minute. So I was just like, fuck it. I bought the trench. I fucking I bought the shirt and that thought that picture was for um it was for the album cover for Parables of the Sower. I was just gonna do a, a photo shoot. You know what I'm saying? I had a whole different name for the album. You know what I'm saying? It was gonna be called some other shit that I might, you know, use later. So I don't wanna say it now. But yeah, you know what I mean? Sometimes I really just like putting on suits and shit and and, and changing the shit up. And and that's how it came about. Because usually back in, New, back in New York at that time, especially if you was a, watching Good Time, a dude with a coat like that, he would open it up and have watches. You know what I mean? Like I a whole... Was, <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? Because I know you're a fan of the old school stuff. Yeah. The dude, what was the dude named? Lindy. And you know I got... <laughs> yes. Yes. Now I got plenty of watches. Yeah, but you know what I'm saying? That, that It'd be that too. I'd be watching these old New York films, New Jack City, fucking Carlitos Way and seeing these niggas in these real nice leather trenches and coats. And I'm like, yo, bro, I love it. Like, I... When I really touch my, you know, first little bag, you will see a switch up. You know what I mean? It's going to be a lot of that type of shit. Just a lot of shit like that. So I listened to the album uh, mm -hmm. Parables of the Sower. Right. On a song like A Night in Medina, you attack the beat uh, lyrically. Mm -hmm. um, reminds me of the hunger when cats were spitting for their lives in the 80s. Oh, fucking threat. Rap game, go protect your neck. Jock King, kick balls and fling to your fucking chest. Never rest, killing devils in hell. Federal letters and calls for my niggas in jail. I'm the Asiatic, God made in a beige fabric. The black galactic can throw the blade, levitate and sadden. Civilized a savage from a journal passage. Eternal magic emerged from the deep labyrinth. Right. Very lyrical and aggressive. Mm -hmm. um, what, do, what would you say influenced that sound to come out? Yo, honestly, like I, I was, li I've been listening to a lot of uh, around that time making that album. It was written, you know what I mean, and uh, just hearing the one the mix on that album was blowing me away. But just hearing how Nas came and how descriptive he was, but still dope and swaggy, you know, took me somewhere. And I know that's that's an easier album to bring up than you know other underground cuts that I could, but that one really had me inspired and it, it pushed my pen. And that's how that song came about for real. What's Very crazy is like that me. you saying it's an easy pick now, but I remember when the album came out and you was right. you was very, very young, right? Very, very. Um, I don't know. Um you, was you even but, born yet? You might not yeah, have been born. Came, was it ninety I wanna say ninety six? Ninety six. I need I wanna say yeah, ninety six. And mm -hmm. I remember people sleeping. I don't know about New York. But I, I remember people sleeping on that album and trying to criticize Nas, nah, saying it wasn't as good as Illmatic. Tell and I remember being in L.A. I, I knew this guy in the record business. Uh, he's a, he was um, he did promotions for a record label. And I dropped him off at work. I would use his car. I would ride around L.A. And he gave me this CD. And he mm -hmm. said, listen to this CD. Because I was he knew I was a Nas fan. Check this out. Mm -hmm. Before it came out. And I listened to it. And I drove around L.A. And it was probably... The most magical time I've ever had in LA was yeah. listening to that album for the first time driving through LA. Ooh, LA. Man, yeah. look. And so now people will look back on it and go, yo, it was written. Yeah, but at the time I was trying to sell people on it. They wasn't really like feeling it. You know what I'm saying? It it was the I guess you could say it was the beats, but at the same time, I don't know how. That shit was crazy. You go back and you listen to um Nas is coming. I'm like, yo, bro. That that beat was fucking insane. So it's like, I get it, but I, at the same time, I don't. I feel like Nas still kept it very hip hop, with a with a crazier sound. You know what I mean? A lot of spirituality and esoteric themes in, in your music. Yeah. Who who do you think your audience is? See that that that's the weird part of this whole shit because at the same time, I feel like I I do write a certain way and for a certain type of listener. 
I don't even know if I really gained that listener. I feel like people who like me or people like who uh who really like the artsy shit I be on. Like you said, you brought up the outfit earlier. People would like to see I do different shit like that. But then um I don't know if they always understand exactly what I do, but I do have a few fans that really sit there and break shit down on my DMs. You know what I mean? So I think my my range is high because I could I could appeal to somebody your age, but then I can appeal to a 17, 16 year old. And, you know, a lot of my fans be these white suburban kids, you know what I mean, who fucking love this shit and eat it up. So word. Well, um, if somebody dropped two hundred thousand on you right now, what's the first three things you're doing with that money? I get that back. First, I'm gonna buy at least two. I'm gonna buy a crib. I'm gonna buy a crib first. Um, then I'm probably going to start, I'm going to start investing in like just straight up marketing and shit for the brand. You know what I mean? Getting us some gear and shit like that make it look a little bit better and just go straight into like recording, you know, new album, new music and having that shit really sound how I want. Get a real engineer to do what it got to do. Um, and yeah, just, just do that. You know what I'm saying? Um, mm. the freestyle that you had posted on IG, I recently yeah. saw was crazy. Yo, the wicked journalist, brain has been laced by the local herbalist. Mother Mary, the dead beat buried beneath her curves and hips. Disassociation with social life left me cold as ice. No suffice, most of my homies floating the poltergeist. Fuck your optimism, I need product, got no pop to piss and shots of ayahuasca acid drops till it shocks my system, jives a victim. They say I'm sick in the mind, raping the face of Mother Nature, causing ripples in time. Um, Thank you. Now, on it's that, yours. And you might be wearing it right now. I see you mm -hmm. got a Jesus piece. Yeah. You got one that look like the AK, right? Yeah, this one. What, yep. Yeah, what's the significance of wearing them both together? Um, I mean, I don't want it to be too deep, but for me, son, it, it definitely shows the duality and shit. You know, God is supposed to be righteous and the gun is supposedly supposed to be like, you know, evil or whatever. But I feel like both these shits are, you know, made to protect you and shit like that. And it's all perspective. So that's how I look at the jewelry. You know what I mean? Word. Right. Uh, and then what do you see as next on the horizon for Ja King, the divine uh, in terms of what you're doing musically and, and the label divine records? I think um, just updating, updating the sound, getting things to be more crispier, things to, uh the beats to really be knocking and, and keeping the identity in the music, but making it a little bit more accessible, you know, for, you know, more of a wider audience. Um, I think a lot of my music is can be super dope if I just had it, took my time or found the right people to mix and bring my voice to life. And now with this new album I'm working on, I found that and I think the sky's about to be the limit. You know what I mean? I got a lot of dope stuff happening in the back doors that I don't want to speak on to right now, but shit is going to get real crazy and uh, different. You know what I'm saying? Word. Um Yeah. Jock King the Divine, the, the, this hip hop lyrical shit is in good hands with you. We're very excited about what you're doing. You got to keep doing it. We know you're going to keep on evolving. We got a yeah. lot of faith in you. I hope that's not too much pressure, but we honored to have you on the Mike Power Show, honored to have you on the platform, and we're going to keep on watching the growth. Thank you for being here. Thank you, God. Peace.